Welcome to The Fix List, a guide to improving your paintings by looking at other work in search of common visual problems. Today's problem is value distribution. And this means that within your image, you will have a full range from lights to darks, but every object doesn't need to have that full range. Some might be medium contrast and some might be high contrast. So let's take a look at some examples from the control paint community to see how we can use this to our advantage. Here I have a very, very common problem for beginners. This is a really nice image, except for the skin value scale. What we have here are very dark shadows and very light highlights. The light highlight on his skin is essentially the same brightness as this glowing electric ball. So in my paint over, I did two things. The first was just to change the values of the skin tones and then to add some rim light. So we can go before and after. I didn't change anything else, but what a huge difference this makes. Now when we look at it, let's just take a few measurements. The lightest area in the skin here, 64% brightness, and the darkest area, 37% brightness. That's only about 30%. Not very high contrast. However, before, the darkest was pure black, and the brightest here is 78%. So that's a very, very wide contrast range. Well, if you look at photos, skin doesn't really have that much contrast. So we can make a big improvement just by being careful about any given material's value distribution. Because for something like his boots here with this shiny metal, it's much more natural that they ought to have high contrast. That's what makes it look like metal. We can apply the exact same fix to this character. It's just a little bit more complicated. So what I thought of was Okay, I want to make these materials look unique from each other. And we essentially have three here. So what I did was I just painted three basic materials. A low contrast red, a high value light metal, and a relatively dark black metal. With those three samples, I just needed to do a paint over to change these materials, which are all very high contrast, and just give them a bit of differentiation. Here you can see the result. Now it is much more clear where one material ends and the other one begins. All the metal is generally low contrast and light. Then there's this dark metal, which is darker. And then there's red, which is kind of in the middle. So once again, here's before. Everything has equal emphasis. It's a bit noisy and hard to know what to look at. And then here's after. I haven't done a very clean paint over, but I've just reallocated the value distribution. And I think it makes a big difference. Before after. In this image, I felt like certain areas were getting a little bit lost because they were all the same value. Sometimes you can just use value distribution to help make shapes more clear. Here's my paint over. It's not a big change, but what I did was make certain areas either lighter or darker to make their surrounding objects stand out a little better. A great example here is the staff. When you look at it before, you can almost miss this really cool shape detail here. By changing the values, you can make it much more visible. And what I have just did was to make sure that objects that were next to each other had a different value. So these gravestones are clearly in the background, and I have accomplished that by raising their value and making them a little lower contrast. I have also made the skulls stand out because they're an important bit of storytelling. And I did that by changing their value relative to the objects around them. So take a look at the skulls. You can see before, they're harder to see and now they're easier to see. I'm just changing the emphasis of the image to help with storytelling purely by changing the value distribution before and after. And the same idea applies to this one. Here we have a much more complex image. There's sort of a big monster attacking this smaller human. We're in a very complicated bit of architecture, and this is a common mistake. It's too high of contrast everywhere. The result is you don't really know what to look at. There's very little sense of depth. It's hard to convey scale. It all just feels kind of flat and a little bit noisy. So in my paint over, here's what I've done. I have played with contrast and value distribution to help separate objects from one another. Now, first off, just in terms of exposure, I wanted to really enhance how bright the glowing whips and the glowing eyes were. And to do that, I needed to make them by far the brightest part of the composition. That meant making things around them a little bit darker. I also wanted the character shape to stand out a bit. 
So I made sure that his silhouette was clear by making the background around it a medium value. So here, it's a bit hard to see where his silhouette is. There's high contrast everywhere you look. And then just by changing those values, you can make him read much more clearly. I've also used atmospheric perspective. So the foreground has more contrast. Things in the background have less contrast. And then I've used a bit of selective high contrast in his mouth just because I wanted to draw attention to it. And that cheats a little bit with the physics of it, but you can see that the face has the highest contrast in the image. And that's important because that's where I want the viewer to look. When you have high contrast everywhere, it's less clear where you want to look. Before and after. And finally, let's finish off with one of my own paintings. This here has a lot of midtones. There's some darker values and some lighter values, but mainly it feels a little flat. So let's take a look at the paint over I did. This gives it so much more depth. I've put in some sort of heavy cloud cover and a bright horizon back in the background. I've made the foreground a little darker and it gets lighter and lighter as it recedes into this low contrast fog. And I've separated the planes with more contrast. So we have a low contrast set of buildings here, which have a very clear read because there's fog right behind them. And I repeat that over and over. So there are these overlapping planes from foreground to middle ground to background. And each one is made distinct because of its value arrangement. So once again, here's before, pretty flat. And here's after, and I think there's a much stronger sense of depth, even though I didn't really change any of the details. So whether you're just changing one character's skin or trying to make an entire complex illustration read more clearly, the way you distribute your contrast is essential. And I want to thank the brave audience members that sent in their art to help with this project. It's not easy to get your work critiqued, so thanks for the help. See you in the next video.